Welcome to The Lead, I'm Jake Tapper. We begin today with the politics lead. President Trump today continued to, to belittle Russian election interference in the 2016 presidential election, as well as continued election interference in the U.S. by Russia. The president going so far as to say he discussed what he called the, quote, Russian hoax in an hour-long phone call with Russian President Vladimir Putin. The two leaders discussed a range of topics, including, the president tweeted, trade, Venezuela, Ukraine, North Korea, nuclear arms control, and even the, quote, Russian hoax. The president went on to tell reporters later that he did not tell Putin to stop engaging in election interference, which remains, according to President Trump's own top national security officials, a continuing threat to the United States. Based on the president's public statements and apparently his private ones with Vladimir Putin, the man who led and continues to lead cyber attacks on the United States, the president's more concerned with underlining that special counsel Robert Mueller was not able to find sufficient evidence that any members of his team engaged in criminal conspiracy with Russia than he is focused on this continued threat from Putin and Putin's intelligence services. The president continues to say, say things about the Mueller investigation that are simply not true, such as in this tweet, quote, the Mueller report strongly stated that there was no collusion with Russia, of course, and in fact, they, the Russians, were rebuffed at every turn in attempts to gain access. It is not true that the Russians were rebuffed at every turn. It is a lie. The Mueller report details any number of instances when Russians were welcomed with open arms by members of the Trump team, including, for instance, the Russian government lawyer offering dirt on Hillary Clinton and getting a meeting at Trump Tower with the president's son, son-in-law, and campaign chairman. This all, of course, comes as Congress is investigating whether the president obstructed justice by trying to stop the FBI and Mueller investigations. As part of that, the House Judiciary Committee has subpoenaed former White House counsel Don McGahn, who told Mueller that President Trump told him to have Mueller fired. President Trump disputes that. And now the president seems to be signaling he wants McGahn to defy the subpoena. CNN's White House correspondent Abby Phillip kicks off our coverage. Did you ask him not to meddle in the next election? Uh, we didn't discuss that. President Trump today speaking with Russian President Vladimir Putin about the Mueller investigation, but he didn't bring up the report's major finding that Russia interfered in the 2016 election. Mr. President, did you address the election meddling issues that came up in the Mueller report with Mr. Putin today? We discussed it. He actually uh, sort of smiled when he said uh, something to the effect that it started off as a mountain and it ended up being a mouse, but he knew that because he knew there was no collusion whatsoever. Uh, so uh, pretty much that's what it was. As I have said in the past. But that's hardly how Mueller would put it. Mueller found insufficient evidence to prove criminal conspiracy, but the investigation concluded the Russian government interfered in the 2016 presidential election in sweeping and systematic fashion to help Trump win, and that the Trump campaign expected it would benefit electorally from information stolen and released through Russian efforts. Mr. McGahn, was it a mistake? Meantime, President Trump appears ready to shut down efforts by congressional Democrats to force former White House counsel Don McGahn to testify on possible obstruction of justice. Appearing to hedge a little after giving a much more definitive answer just last night on his favorite channel. So I don't think I can let him and then tell everybody else you can't, because especially him, because he was a counsel. And just yesterday, President Trump disparaged President Obama's response to Russian interference in 2016, saying that President Obama could have confronted Putin, but didn't. He said he did nothing. But that's actually not true. President Obama did directly confront Putin face to face in a meeting. But President Trump, in his first phone call with Putin since the Mueller report was released, appeared to not be interested in talking at all about the major finding of the Mueller report on Russian interference, Jake. All right, Abby Phillip, and Abby joins our, our experts here. Uh, Bill, I want to play again. Uh, actually, this is new, I think. Uh, something that President Trump said earlier today, describing how he talked about the Russian hoax uh, with Vladimir Putin. Uh, take a listen. Sort of smiled when he said uh, something to the effect that it started off as a mountain and it ended up being a mouse. But he knew that because he knew there was no collusion whatsoever. Uh, so. Uh, Pretty much that's what it was. I mean, once again, it seems like President Trump taking the word of Vladimir Putin over his own top intelligence and national security officials who say there was Russian election interference, period. 
at Helsinki, he took Putin's word over the intelligence community. Now he's taking President Putin's word over the special counsel, a 400-plus page report, which none of which has been quarreled with. None of, not one is none of it's been disproved. But has the Trump administration even tried to, uh, you know, discredit any fact in that report? I'm really struck. Remember, Rudy Giuliani was preparing a response, and they were going to hit back. Mm -hmm. Literally, is there a sentence in that report that any responsible person has said or shown or even suggested is inaccurate? So we have a report showing systematic. Uh, Russian interference in the election, and the president uh, not only doesn't raise it, President Trump doesn't not only doesn't raise it with President Putin, but accepts President Putin's notion that this is all a hoax. And Elliot, uh, you heard President Trump there saying that he didn't bring up Russian election interference. Let's remind viewers what, what Abby just reminded people. The special counsel found that, quote, the Russian government, this is a quote, the Russian government interfered in the 2016 presidential election in sweeping in systematic fashion to help President Trump get elected, and, quote, that the campaign, the Trump campaign, expected it would benefit electorally from information stolen and released through Russian efforts. Now, okay, not enough for a criminal prosecution, I get it, but still, how, do you, how does the president not bring this up? Right, we've gotten hung up on this question of what it takes to charge something as a crime and aren't focused on the clear evidence of wrongdoing on the part of the president and frankly on the part of the president's campaign. Now, perhaps you could not charge them with quote unquote collusion, even though we all know that's not a, a federal you know, crime. Well, uh, they didn't charge him with conspiracy. They, right, but, they, right. they didn't even try. I but mean, that doesn't mean that the, con that the conduct was proper for the president right, of the United States. Right. Look, I think the problem here is not with the president, frankly, even with Vladimir Putin. It's with the congressional Republicans who are letting the president off the hook with respect to this conduct, with respect to sitting down with or talking to Vladimir Putin and, and agreeing with him over the advice. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay, I, I'm as here. happy as anyone to attack the congressional Republicans. But last I looked, there's this party called the Democratic Party that controls the House of That's Representatives. And if the president committed impeachable acts, maybe the Democratic Party in the House of Representatives should start moving something on that. I, but something I think we're going to talk about today <laughs> is, is all of the attempts the Democrats are making to try to hold the president accountable. But going back to the beginning of this presidency, because the president remains popular with his base, um, they're, they're giving a free pass on, look, Ronald Reagan should be rolling over in his grave at the kinds of um, statements that we're seeing uh, uh, President Trump agreeing with. One of the startling things about Bill Barr's testimony on the Hill this week was that he was asked repeatedly about these questions. Was it okay for the Trump campaign to have done all of these things that were listed out in the Mueller report? And each time he refused to answer the question, even when they were asked by a Republican senator in that case. So it's not just Republican senators on Capitol Hill. In fact, some of them are calling this behavior out. But it's also the Attorney General Bill Barr, who doesn't even want to go there, uh, you know, below the bar for charging a crime, yeah. what is right and what's wrong. And Kirsten, uh, let's not forget, about three weeks ago, Rudy Giuliani, the president's attorney on State of the Union, told me that there's nothing wrong, forget illegal, yeah. nothing wrong with getting information from the Russians, depending on what it is. Yeah, I mean, that seems to be where now this conversation has shifted, that actually this seems to be an argument that's being made, and that, um, you know, and that Bill Barr declined to really address that issue. And, you know, it should be illegal, it seems like. Uh, and, and it also seems like the president should be angry when he's talking to Putin about what has been laid out so clearly um, in terms of what Russia was doing and that they plan to do it again, and he's not. One other thing that was interesting on the, on the call, uh, today. Uh, take a listen to the president talking about how he believes Putin on the subject of Venezuela, Putin claiming uh, that he's not interested in interfering in Venezuela, despite everything we've heard from Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and all sorts of other U.S. officials. Take a listen. He is uh, not looking at all to get involved in Venezuela other than he'd like to see something positive happen for Venezuela. Directly contradicting statements made by Secretary of State Pompeo, National Security Advisor Bolton, who have called out Russia specifically for propping up the dictator, the socialist dictator Maduro. And we've done stories on the show about how there are Russian troops in Venezuela <laughs> yes. right now. Yeah. And, and, I mean, Pompeo said this on this network earlier this week, that he believed that Maduro was about to leave Venezuela but was convinced not to do it by the Russians. Uh, John Bolton stood outside of the White House. Uh, I was standing right in front of him when he said he believed the Cubans and the Russians were propping up Maduro's regime. So the president has a phone call with Vladimir Putin, and similarly to Russian interference, Putin tells him something, and the president's response to that is, 
oh, you're right. And then he repeats it to the press. Uh, and this is now the new narrative from the administration. But it really goes against everything, the entire foreign policy strategy when it comes to Venezuela. And it'll be interesting to see how Mike Pompeo and John Bolton shift now their language around Russia's interference in Venezuela, which is a huge part of that puzzle. And, and Bill, just to point out, President Trump is not saying, well, this is what Putin claims. Right. He is giving Putin's point of view almost as if he is the spokesman for the Kremlin. He is not looking at all to get involved in Venezuela. There are Russian troops in Venezuela. Right. This is the president's taking Putin's word on Venezuela, taking Putin's word on the interference. You know, on Kirsten's point, when he was a candidate, fine. He was a candidate. It was a <laughs> sloppy campaign. They should have been worse. He's president now. He has different. Even if they did some stuff in the campaign, as president of the United States, he has a phone conversation for an hour with the president of Russia and doesn't rebuke him for an attack on our electoral system and then takes his word over the manifest you know, obvious facts that Russia is in Venezuela. It's a recurring theme. And take this out of the national security context, overruling the opinions of career officials, national security officials, lawyers, the Justice Department. And, uh, and, facts, and facts. And just the facts on the ground as they're being, as we're witnessing them ourselves.